All right, welcome back. Let's pick up a few more responsibilities and uh, let me look at a couple of rewards of for the pastor. Uh, so the next one, pastors are to be the Lord's servants as they maintain Christ-like attitudes during difficult times. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 2, 22 to 24. 2 Timothy 2, 22 to 24. Chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the law out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not to sin. Yes, thank you, Jafina. So it says here that pastors are to maintain Christ-like attitudes even during difficult times. So there will be times in ministry when things will go up and down. There will be situations, there will be people, uh, there will be seasons of ups and downs. Right? There will be those difficult times. There will be seasons when things are going smooth. But we are to maintain Christ-like attitudes not only during good times, but also during those difficult seasons, because that's where our true character is shown, right? And so Paul is saying here, uh, avoid avoid things. Twenty two, flee from evil desires and pursue righteousness. Uh, verse twenty three, don't have arguments to do with foolish and don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce nothing but quarrels. Right, so uh, maintain Christ-like attitudes through good times and even through the challenging times. Next one, they are to reject the practices. Pastors are to reject the practices of the surrounding culture. Now, this is from First Timothy chapter four, one to six. Let's read that. First Timothy four, it's one to six, and then we'll just discuss on what that means. First Timothy 4. Yes. First Timothy chapter 4, 1 to 6. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed Amen. thank you thank you rosalind now as pastors we must understand that there are different kinds of cultures and different kinds of uh, you know practices that are there around us and they sometimes come in and infiltrate the church so as pastors we must be right uh, understanding and we must know how to protect our congregation from things that can affect them right now i'm not saying that all cultures are wrong right uh, little did we know that from 2020 once the pandemic had hit uh, you know everything has gone online now we didn't know it 10 years back right things have changed so things have changed some things have changed for the good so it's all right right but there are cultures and there are trends and new kind of um, cultural strat cultural changes that can come and affect the church as pastors be aware that whatever culture whatever things that are surrounding it must not affect the truth of god's word it must not affect the working of the ministry within the church right we have to protect them uh, if you feel that there are now for example everyone's open about uh, gay marriage they're getting married in the church 
then there's also the uh, LGBTQ and uh, where they they again get married in the church. There are believers who are uh, you know in this. But now the wrong thing to do is to say it's okay, right? Because it's a cultural thing nowadays. We are no more in 1990s. We're in 2020. Uh, 2022 and we're on uh, we're we're just moving fast uh, in the future so things have changed maybe for 10 years back it was it was a big deal but now it's not a big deal now that as pastors we must be very careful that we don't accept everything that culture says right so what is truth is truth what is sin is sin and that cannot be changed right so as pastors we must we must ensure that uh, we have this ability to to bring forth the truth and to protect the church from the things uh, from the cultural settings. And Paul is writing this to Ephesus, where there was so much of you know uh, cultural, uh, I would say religious, cultural uh, ethnicities and different kinds of people who are involved in different kinds of uh, idol practices, sexual immorality. Uh, when he's writing Timothy and he's saying, be aware, right? Uh, don't let those things come in and infiltrate the church, right? Then just a few things, Re reject drunkenness. Uh, uh, as pastors, we must have, care we must be able to care and share with people. Uh, very important next point is to be content with what we have and not to be lovers of money. Let's read 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 3. 1 Timothy 3 and 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 3. Not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. Yes. Let's read Titus 1.7. For a bishop, for a bishop must be blameless, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money. Yeah, thank you so much, Rosalind. So we see here that as pastors, we must be content with what we have, and not lovers of money. Now, Paul is writing this. It's interesting. You see, Paul is writing this thousands of you know, years ago. And we're seeing all of this even right now in the church, right? uh, where you know, ministers of God have become lovers of money. And it, it's very sad because I remember uh, you know, just to... I think it was a couple of months back. Somebody sent me this video clip, and the video clip was um, from I think it was God TV or something. And uh, and in the clip, this this I think it was a tele evangelist or uh, I don't know what his name or is, but uh, but he was preaching and he, he began the 30, 30 odd minutes that you have in that episode. Uh, he began talking about money and he started saying okay this is what i have this is what i you know i have a i have a dog which is $9000 i have a jet which is you know 15000 uh, 15 million and now we are planning to buy another jet and then this jet is going to uh, you know and this is what i want to do with my house and this is what my son wears and you know the whole 25 minutes he kept saying all about money. And, and in the last five minutes, he says, uh, okay, the phone is going to ring now. So we're going to go open up for donations. And the angel of the Lord is right next to you. And for some of you, he's saying give $5,000. For some of you, he's saying give $3,000. So for those who the angel of the Lord is saying give $5,000, make the call first. Then we'll go to the 3,000. Then we... And I thought, what's happening here? Paul is writing this thousands of years back saying, we are not to be lovers of money, but to be content with what we have. In 
you know in a day and age that we are living in it's it's very hard to find people who are content uh, paul writes contentment godliness with contentment is of great gain being content god i want to thank you for what i have but as pastors and leaders be careful do not let the enemy enter in because he can enter in in a very subtle way and he says paul also says the money is the root of all evil for wealth we can do anything so we must guard our hearts against this right uh, and it says there to be content and not lovers of money right uh, and we praise god for those who are there around us who are truly serving god uh, where money is not a priority at all right and god will you know if we are doing god's work if we are doing it faithfully god knows how to provide for it right uh, but the moment the focus becomes money to do ministry we've lost the way right our focus must be minister or ministry and god will provide for the ministry to be done it's god's word it's god's kingdom it's god's work and god will provide for it right uh, so this is something as pastors we must be very very careful right now especially when you know the ministry is small we are focused on building the church but what happens when the ministry grows suddenly we're getting a lot of offerings a lot of uh, tithes and people are just giving into god's kingdom guard your heart let not money cause us to fall is very sad where we see you know ministries taken to court because they have not filed their it or they've uh, there's tax evasion and there's all kinds of problems in ministry right why because too much money and then they've not dealt with it the right way so if you are in the pastoral ministry you're leading your own ministry have a team of people or have a dedicated person who can look after the accounts of the church you may be getting very less money or you know uh, within the ministry but as the ministry grows you know uh, people will start giving in you know that okay lord i want to do things the right way so you're setting up the example you're making things right from the small when when things are small itself right uh, pastors are to give themselves to the public reading of the scripture and do the work of an evangelist uh, pastors are to keep christ's work on the cross before the people so it's not there are plenty of verses uh, uh, so I, I will share this document i'll put it up on the stream so you can download it and read from this as well uh, so christ the pastors are to keep christ's work on the cross before people if people are you know coming to me if their you know if, if their interest is on me as a person then i have failed as a pastor i must lead people to the cross lead people to christ not to myself right uh, it's not about me it's god is using me but or god is using us but it's not about okay you know i did it but as believers as pastors we must take people and point them to Jesus Christ point them to the cross because that is where we find forgiveness that is where we find redemption and and healing and deliverance so that is a very important responsibility as pastors uh, finally pastors are to grow the members of the congregation and they may carry out the christian ministry fully Right. so to grow the members to help them grow in spiritual uh in a spiritual way now paul is writing to the corinthians he's saying i fed you with milk but there's now i'm writing to you after three and a half to four years but i'm still feeding you with milk now is the time you should be having spiritual food but you're still having milk so what is he trying to say I mean, even though you're flowing the gifts of the spirit and uh, th there's a we see that there's a flow of the gifts of the spirit but you're still so immature 
you are to develop yourselves, grow in a certain way that you begin to eat the food of the word of God and not just stay on milk, right? So as pastors, very important responsibility is to take people from being spiritual babies to make them children and men and women of God, growing them, developing them in the things of God, right? Now, this is not going to happen overnight, but as we keep ministering, as we keep, uh, you know, Sunday after Sunday through Bible studies, through life group meetings, through all the programs and events that we do, uh, our focus must be to build people, right? Uh, so it's good to have programs. It's good to have events. It's good to reach out to people. That's wonderful. But even as they, if we reach out, our focus must be, yes, we want to see the church growing. We want to see many more people coming in. But we also want to see this, the spiritual lives of people from being spiritual babies becoming spiritual men and women of God. So I've just listed down from first, second, first and Second Timothy and Titus, few of the responsibilities of the pastor. And when it comes to rewards, right? Uh, there's so much that we can talk about, but let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 16. First Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 10 to 16. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful. Oh. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? Right, thank you, Jafina. So Paul is writing and he's saying, he's talking about the judgment seat of Christ, right? Uh, as believers, each one of us will stand at the judgment seat of Christ and we will be rewarded. Now, what will be rewarded? We'll be rewarded for the works that we have done. There will be certain works that we have done, done out of the by the anointing, by the power of the Holy Spirit, done to please God, to build God's kingdom. It will be tested by fire and like gold and silver that will last. Right? There will be some of the works that we may have done which is done out of selfish ambition, jealousy, pride. And if it is any of that, when the fire comes on that work, if it, it'll be like hay. Once you put fire to that, it'll just become ashes. So basically, our reward is how, how we've done the work, how we've done the ministry, whether we have done it with a pure and a sincere heart, wanting to build people to glorify God, to glorify and to build his kingdom, or whether we've done it for our own selfish ambition. And Paul writes and says that each one of us will be rewarded by the Lord. Now, remember this, grace is free. That's why he goes on to the verse, you yourself will, we ourselves will be saved from the fire, but the works that we have done, is, which is tested by fire, now imagine this, what if God tests us, tests certain work of ours and it becomes ashes? Now you say, God, I thought this is good. You know, I thought this is, this is something that is good. God says, no, it was, it was good. People thought good. People thought it's good. 
I mean, you know, the everyone else who, who was there thought it was good, but I, I saw your heart. And your heart, you felt this is what, you know, uh, maybe pride or jealousy or anger or or this feeling of I'm, I'm the one who's doing this. And so it's going to become ashes. But there are works that God will put fire to and he'd say, I'm pleased with this. And we will be rewarded for that work. Right? So it's very important as pastors, as ministers, as believers of God, whatever we do, we have to see whether it's pleasing God, whether it is in line with God. Is God being glorified in what we do? Right? Uh, many, many, many times this has happened to me where, you know, I've led worship, right? And I felt, oh, I've got out of that stage and I felt, wow, I think that was one of the best worship sets I've done. But many times I've gone home and I've thought to myself, I felt so empty after that, you know. People have come up and said, oh, worship was very nice. I enjoyed it and all of that. That personally, I felt so empty. There were times when I went back to God and said, why am I feeling this way? Why am I not feeling a joy or a, or, or, or this, you know, the strength of God or this joy of God inside me? Why am I feeling so troubled in my spirit? And I realized many times the Holy Spirit has, you know, revealed to me, and just ministered to me saying, you have focused more on what the band should do. Rather, you had two hours of practice for the worship, but you have had only half an hour of prayer before the worship. Two hours of worship practice, rehearsals, but only half an hour of prayer. So musically, you're very good. But in the spirit, I, I didn't, uh, you know, of course, God is gracious, right? But in the spirit, there could have been so much more that's done. I, and I thank God. I mean, I'm not saying re two hours rehearsal is not important. It's very important, right? We we do what is right. We do give our best for God. But we must also balance it with the spiritual. And so over time, I learned, okay, if I'm spending two hours in practice or rehearsals for worship, I got to give at least two to three hours in God's presence, reading and praying. That comes even with preaching. So sometimes we, what I do is personally, I just spend Friday evening, Saturdays, this whole time just reading the word, spending time in prayer. Because Sunday I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared, whether it's worship, whether it's preaching the word, uh, that be done of the spirit, right? So our works are going to be judged by fire. Finally, what is our reward? Second Timothy chapter four and verse six to eight. Let's read that. Now, this is the Apostle Paul, his last epistle. He's in prison. He's going to die anytime. And here's what he says. Second Timothy chapter four, six to nine. Six to eight, sorry. Second Timothy chapter four, verses six to eight. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Be diligent to come to me, with me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Rosalind. So Paul is here on his last few moments of his, a few moments, but his last few days of his life. And he's saying, I fought the good fight of faith. Now there is a crown, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord has prepared for me. The crown of righteousness each one of us if we have fought or if we are fighting the good fight of faith as pastors as ministers of god we have a crown of righteousness and we know the wonderful meaning of righteousness 
to be in right standing with God. We can stand with this crown, with a right standing front of God and say, God, I've done your work. I've done the ministry. I've done it faithfully. I have fought the good. He was there just trying to bring me down, but I fought the good fight. And, and there is a crown of righteousness. What a joy. Picture this. The Old Testament says, you can't come near God. You can't come near God because God is so great and so he's Yahweh, so holy. But now you and I can come because we have a crown of righteousness. Right? This is, what, a, what a reward that is. Right? Nobody can take that crown away from you. Paul writes, and I think uh, uh, there are many other scriptures in Corinthians. Again, he writes and he says, you know, when you look at athletes, they, they struggle all their life and they work for this crown, which is perishable. But you and I, as ministers of God, we are fighting this faith, good fight and we're working for a crown that is imperishable. Nobody can... Moths cannot, time will not decay that crown. That crown is an eternal crown, right? And it's so powerful. Uh, I just want you to read one more verse here. Uh, Philippians, Philippians chapter, sorry, not Philippians. Um, let me just get that verse. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19. This is a powerful verse, and I always keep this in my mind when I read this. First Thessalonians 2.19. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Yeah. Thank you, Jafina. So Here's one reward here. What is our glory? What is our crown? Paul is saying to the to the uh, believers, he's saying, it is you, it's you, the people who we have ministered to, they are our crown in the presence of God. What a joy it will be to be in God's presence and God says, these are the people who we have ministered to. This is your crown. These are the people who you have built up let them as a shepherd you've let them let the sheep in the right way here's your crown paul is saying i glory not in not in the things that i have done not in the missionary journeys not in the challenges not in the difficulties not in uh, the churches that have been established and the leader and and the things that i've done but i glory in you before the throne of god i glory in what the believers and the believers before the kingdom, before the throne of God. So as pastors, our reward is when we are ministering to people, God is going to reward us for the work that we are doing. We can glory in the people. It's very less about the work or the, uh, or the things that we are achievements, but it's about the people, about building people. And God says, oh, you will be rewarded for that. Right. And then there are the again those regular rewards that we have this worthy of double honor and God begins to pour out his anointing and all of that continues. But these are the basic rewards that God has for us. So we've come to a close of this chapter. We have I think another uh, after this chapter 12 is the restoration of the ministry of the pastor. And chapter 13, again, we have our practical keys. So we've come almost to the end, but uh, what I'll do is I will uh, post this notes on your on the stream on, and even on the classwork tab. So you can just uh, download it and just read it uh, to help you as well. So, all right, so let's close for today. Any questions, any thoughts, any questions? Yeah, I hope this has been helpful. I uh, hope you all are able to digest what is being taught, and I pray that you will, each one of us will, you know, work towards this. Right? Uh, that we will truly uh, learn to serve God in an honorable way. 
Right. So let's pray. Uh, any one of us can close in prayer. Yes. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful class that we had today. May you receive all the glory, even as we meditated on the responsibilities of the pastors. Help us with your divine grace that we not only be hearers of the word of God, but be doers of the word of God. Even as we are learning and growing in the ministry of pastors and teachers, as we are preparing, we give ourselves, we surrender ourselves completely to your will. Help us serve you to the best of our abilities. Also, God, we thank you for our dear Pastor Paul. We bless him, we bless his life, and pray your grace to multiply upon his life and his family. We ask you, God, that the revelation of the word of God be given unto him as he spent time in your presence. He is indeed a blessing, God, and to the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rosalind. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. We'll catch up next uh, Thursday and uh, continue on this. God bless. Have a great week. Bye now.